Uh, good morning, Claire. How are you? Good morning, Jeremy. And um, before you start, I just think I'm going to pick you up on saying receptionists are always miserable. That is such an insulting term for hardworking, usually lowly paid, usually local women uh, who do an unbelievable job uh, picking up the phone, dealing with abuse uh, at the front end of the surgery. And I think that is such an easy quip that... Uh, it probably uh, is an easy quip, and I guess it's, it's born it's out a, of... If I would say this, Claire, I guess it's born out of frustration, no, which a lot of people feel. But it's unfair to pick on those who can't answer you back, who aren't on this programme, who don't have the capacity to speak up for themselves. Well, you've done it for them very brilliantly. Can I ask you, on a serious note, if we take that it's difficult for a lot of these receptionists because of a system, and, and let's, let's look at, with respect, let's flip the coin and imagine people's frustrations. This new digital phone system idea that is being, it says... Uh, rolled out across a thousand practices. I don't know how many practices there are in the UK. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. So, so, so about twelve or something percent. Um, big investment, part of the primary care recovery plan. Is it going to scratch the service, Claire? Is it? Is it? Is it relevant? Is it a good idea? What are your thoughts? Well, of course, it's a good idea. I mean, anything that improves the ability for patients to access their primary care service, GPs, pharmacists, all of us. And anything that improves the ability for me to plan my day has to be a good thing. And what? And you won't get a, a, an engaged tone. Again, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what that comment was. The whole point about digital technology is you don't get an engaged tone. You get different options. It, it's essentially unlimited lines. Many people uh, listening to this will have rung up a, a call centre press one for this, press two for this, say what you think you, is, is the matter with you. Do you want to be called back rather than hanging on? What it means is we're getting that same system. It doesn't negate the fact that you can have unlimited lines, but we haven't got unlimited doctors, we haven't got unlimited pharmacists, we haven't got unlimited paramedics. So there is still going to be a problem about capacity, but nevertheless, it will make it easier to be able to plan the work. It will also, and if you forgive me for saying this, it will also allow us to put things that prioritise. So, for example, we've got a terrible problem with uh, measles vaccination. In some areas of London, only 40% of children are being vaccinated. So we can put as the first option when you ring up, if you're ringing for a vaccination for your child, please go X. So we can prioritise uh, problems that we see. So. It will be a good thing. And by the way, you don't have to see a patient uh, to make a diagnosis. Again, that's a, a fallacy. As a GP, about 80 to 90% of what I do to make a diagnosis is by taking the story from the patient. And in fact, physically examining a patient as a GP can I, doesn't add much. Um, can I... <laughs> have you got a sense of humour? I've got a very good sense of humour, actually, but I'm just... Tony, not... Tony Tucker in Barrow in Furness says, I'd put some GP receptionists in charge of our border control because no-one will get past. You see, that it is just a, a cheap oh, quote, but it's good. Different. I know, but that's different. That's different. I know. Now, Cla Claire, can I ask you, from a GP's point of view, uh, we hear so much about... A lot of criticism is levelled, which is, I guess in many cases is unfair, but at 7.4 million, our current waiting list. Take, take off the hat of being president of the GP's organisation and talk to me as a GP. How frustrating is it... It's to, horrible. ..to not be able to do what you know you want to within this system? And, and a lot of people will say it's all about money. How do you make it better, Claire? It isn't about money. It's and it's quite complex. It's about redesigning the health system, not reorganising it. But most patients I see have co complex problems. They've got four or five different chronic diseases wrapped into one. Yet we have a health system with specialists who only see one particular illness. So, for example, they might only deal with diabetes or hypertension. I don't think I ever see a patient now who only has diabetes, who only has hypertension. So that's that's a problem for GPs. We're doing far more sort of medical work, physicians work than we ever did. With not We're enough time, I guess. 
not enough time, but I'd actually argue, Jeremy, we, we shouldn't be doing it. That We should be redesigning the system to the people that have those skills, i.e. physicians, I mean, medical specialists, come and support us in that. Because by the time you've got five different diseases, it becomes very, very difficult, even to do simple things. Like I saw a patient the other day who had just a very common problem, constipation, really common. But I didn't know what to do because she had, she was on 13 medicines, she had five different conditions. So the whole thing is becomes complicated. Now, with respect to the 7 million uh, waiting, it's, it's terrible because they come to see us, terrible for the patient, by the way, come to see us. We spend a lot of the consultation trying to lobby on their behalf, trying to prioritise them. Their condition gets worse, so we're dealing actually with a sicker person than when we first referred. So uh, hopefully, and it comes back to my first comment, please get your flu vaccine this year. Please, if you're eligible, get your COVID vaccine. And please, if you're a parent, please get your child immunised so that we can at least prevent some of the problems that we're going to see this winter. Uh, because otherwise, I'm afraid we're not going to be able to cope. But Coming back to the telephony system, at least that will help us in some way. At least it's a move forward in the right direction. Just one final question, and I must move on. Really appreciate you being on, Claire. Do you understand people's frustrations, and do you think it's unfairly aimed at GPs? And let's be really serious. I know I made a quip at the beginning, but if you can't get an appointment and you can't get through and you can't get seen, it is bloody frustrating, yeah, right? It, of course it is, but we're not miracle workers. And the problem is that the GP is at the front end. We, we, we're suffering from, from our, my profession, because I look after mentally ill doctors, from anxiety, we're suffering from guilt, from shame. We don't want to not serve the needs of our patients. And to, to, to blame us is unfair. It's like blaming the airline pilot because the aeroplane has been cancelled or that, that you can't get a ticket. It's not our fault. We'd see more patients today than we saw pre pandemic and we're doing our best promise you now listen i really appreciate you being on dame claire uh, gerardo thank you very much indeed president of the uh, royal college of gps